Hello friends, I am Daisy Victoria and today I'm going to be getting ready in this gown which is based on a famous portrait of Elizabeth Woodville. If you didn't catch my last video, I'll fill you in a little bit. Elizabeth Woodville was the Queen Consort of England from 1464 to 1483. She was married to King Edward IV and she is actually the grandmother of Henry VIII who is super famous. <laughs> Elizabeth Woodville was known for her great beauty and she actually married King Edward IV as one of his subjects which was super uncommon for the period. This is my chemise. It is a very basic sort of standard chemise style and I will put some links in the description for resources I have to help you guys make one. There are other variations you can use. For example, you can actually wear the underdress that I have in my gothic fitted gown slash kirtle tutorial. This is just one I happen to have available and I think it works really well. This is the dress itself. It is made of a black velveteen and I have a gold brocade around the neckline and the cuffs. I actually dyed this brocade because I couldn't find one that was like a rich gold so I got it myself. <laughs> the front lace is up using a finger loop woven band and the eyelet holes are all stitched by hand. I know it might be a little hard to see because I've got so much black here but hopefully you get an idea at least of what's going on with this dress. I am going to omit one layer which would have been worn in the period and the reason is because I live in a very warm climate so I am trying to minimize the heat stroke potential. The layer that I will be omitting is called a kirtle and I have some more information on kirtles which I'll link below. The kirtle is a fitted garment and it's sort of like a supportive undergarment which you would wear over your chemise. So I am putting on the chemise and then I'm going to put this dress on directly on top of that chemise. I like to get my hands all the way through first so I have them free and in hindsight I could have waited till after to put my rings on but I didn't so we're gonna work with it. Now I'm going to take my lacing needle and thread my cord through that. I'm using a plastic yarn needle and then I'm just going to spiral lace my gown. If you haven't seen any of my other Get Ready With Me Medieval and Renaissance videos, when I'm done spiral lacing, I just tie the lace to itself and then stick it inside the dress. This is not super tight, it is kind of fitted, but there is a belt which provides the extra fit. The belt is made of black velvet matching the gown. I chose to do that because I can't really see her belt in the image, and I know that similar dresses were in fact worn with belts. I used some very pretty metal filigrees I found. This belt can be closed in the front or in the back. The reason I'm closing it in the back is because that's what it looks like in the portrait. I'm having trouble hooking it in the back, so I'm going to do it in the front and turn it around. So you get a glimpse of what it would look like if I hooked it in the front. And now the placket with my awesome pearl trim. Now the placket can actually be pinned to the dress so that it stays exactly in place. Next we have jewelry. I created these necklaces to mimic what she's wearing in the portrait. This is made of a lovely metal filigree with some pearls and red beads attached to it. And then this one is made of several types of beads and a black rhinestone in the center along with these chevron shaped beads along the cording. And now it's time for the hat. The reason I've done my hair the way I have is so that it will help to anchor my hat. 
what I have is Dutch braids, which I've then just taken and pinned onto the top of my head. The hat is pretty amazing. These are known as henins, and this one is actually a truncated henin because it's short. Also sometimes referred to as a flower pot henin since it is shaped like a flower pot. If you watch my making of video, you can see a little bit more of what goes into the structure of this hat. I actually used a basket as my base, and that's based on the idea that these hats could potentially have been made of woven reeds. This is a separate black velvet band with a little wire tab here. This particular hat has a wire going up on top of it, which holds the veil out a little bit. And some of the henins have wires on top, some do not. I chose it because I think it looks like she might have one in her portrait. And then this hat is covered in the same fabric I used for the cuffs and collar of the dress. The veil is actually a fake silk, so it's polyester, and I think it looks quite nice though. I actually hemmed it all by hand. It took about an hour and a half because I was watching a movie, I know. And so that is pinned on and Really the way I got that pinned was by looking at portraits from the period, trying to copy them, and just playing with the draping for quite some time. I'm going to attempt to put this on without removing the black band, which you can see here. Another option is to put the black band on first and secure it and then add the hat. Because I'm dressing myself by myself, I'm going to try my best to keep it all together. I am going to unpin the veil from the back though. This black band just needs to be tight to hold the hat onto your head and I have a tie in the back and because I have braided my hair on top of my head this band actually sits in front of those braids and the braids help it to stay in place and not go anywhere. I'm going to tuck in those strings and the veil is already pinned in place because I knew I would have trouble doing that while getting dressed by myself, especially in front of the camera rather than a mirror. The final part I do have to redo is pinning this veil around to the back. So it kind of comes down across the forehead here and then in a lot of the paintings it seems like it's kind of drawn to the back so I'm just going to pin it back there. 